Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Chris and today we got a freaking fire video, bro. Hopefully. I right, it's my third it's it's my Thursday. It's my birthday and yeah, it's Thursday. I'm trying to get this video out today under 10 minutes because I told y'all I was going to do three videos a day and I ain't going to lie to y'all. So, let's get into this real quick. This going with the flow episode 4 if I'm not mistaken. And first things first, we got my centipede. So, let's get it. The homie is literally just chilling on the surface, so he must be hungry, bruh. Oh, his antennas are flaring up. He's trying to see if he senses any food. And yeah, he definitely senses food. So now he's using whatever side of the... In oh, he bit the wrong thing. No. We need to see this. Lift this thing up. Come on. Come on, bruh. Yeah! Oh, oh, the roach is getting away. And let's get it, bruh. He ate for us on camera. It's already a good start to the video. And now he's gonna take it into his tunnel where he feels more secure and start eating it alive, bruh. Just like that. Isn't that freaking crazy, guys? Beautiful colors. I can't wait till this thing gets huge. This thing's probably about three inches right now. So it's still pretty small. And yeah, we're gonna place this hide right here. We might give it a little spray down because his enclosure is looking a little bit dry. But this is a desert species, so they probably do like a little bit dry on one side. But I'm probably going to spray like this quadrant. I'm going to avoid spraying right here just so he has that dry area if he really needs it. But yeah, you're supposed to keep centipedes pretty moist anyway, so. I finished spraying it and you guys could actually see a close-up of the centipede eating the roach. I've never been able to get a shot like this, so I'm pretty excited right now, bro. Look at that. You can see... Those modified legs that have turned into envenomators or whatever. And the little mouthpiece working to break up that roach and eat it. It's crazy, bruh. What a weird little creature. How does something adapt like that? Psychotic. Alright, let me move on to something else. Alright, so next up, we got my Black Widow. And this is a little... Uh, what is this? A waxworm larva. So it turns into some type of moth. Can't really tell you what type of moth that is. But yeah, it's looking pretty small. So I thought it'd be the perfect size for my little black widow right here. So let's feed her real quick. So it took me about 10, 15 minutes and there's a continental roach in there. Okay, well, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to finally get that larva thingy in the actual web. And oh yeah, that white stuff right there, that's black widow poop. I didn't even know they pooped, but obviously like... I knew that all animals poop, so technically I did, but that's crazy. I've never seen it before. Anyways, yeah, I kind of realized that that thing's not really going to move, so I don't know how she's going to be able to sense that there's something on her web, but yeah, if she does, then I'll show y'all guys, all right? So we'll check back in that in about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's go film something else real quick. I updated you guys on this in a decent amount of time, so I thought I might as well. I grabbed three that... I just first seen and if I'm being honest a few have died these are my bark scorpions and that's just something that's to be expected when it comes to keeping baby animals some do pass away just because of unknown reasons but yeah they're pretty fat I have not been feeding them live I pre-kill and then they scavenge because every time I try live they just get bullied by pretty much whatever I put in there I don't have a small enough feeder to feed them and fruit flies even even those are too small. So yeah, they are getting pretty big. This one's pretty fat, as you can see. And since I do feed, what is what is it called? Um, Pre-killed prey at him. Mold does like to grow in here. So yeah, that is not good at all. Got to take that stuff out. As you can see, he is doing good, or she, but there is some more mold because of the pre-killed stuff. And this mold be looking nasty, nasty. Ugh. That's not okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, guys. Those are the scorpions. They've been doing good. Just in case you guys were interested at all. And yeah, let's film something else. Okay, I'm here with my alligator lizards. And we got this humongous little, um... Why do I keep on freaking... 
wax worms god damn bro jesus christ i cannot think today but yeah we got these humongous wax worms and this humongous alligator lizard so let's see if he'll eat real quick oh come on now bro for your brother see yeah they always know to go for the head bro highly intelligent really really smart lizard bro and this is the one with the crazy patterning and yeah if you see my checking up on my alligator lizards video i forgot what i titled it exactly but this is the one that did miss the tip of its tail it looks to be that it's growing back just fine so that's good to know and yeah i'm about to go to the reptile shop in a little bit so i'm gonna be getting these guys a bunch of crickets and stuff so they'll be munching on those so i don't want to give them too many wax worms and yeah, a lot of them are chilling right here. As you can see, they do actually need some water. Yeah, this is what I like to do just to make sure that they never, I know that I got their humidity requirements good enough. So these localities both like heat. They're from the desert, California, you know what I'm saying? So I give one side a little more humid. You know what I'm saying? They got that humidity if they need it. And that's probably why they're all staying around on this side because they know that there's a lack of humidity. So. They need it. So they have to regulate pretty much the requirements, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is if there's, if they feel a little bit too hot, they're going to come to the cool side where it's nice and humid and cool. If they feel a little bit too cool, they're going to go to the warm side where they could get some, some heat pretty much. So yeah, you like to give them, or I'd like to give them a variety just so they never feel that times are hard. You know what I'm saying? Because captive... Captive vibes are always supposed to be much easier than wild vibes, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole point of treating your lizard to captivity. And because I just sprayed this junk down instead of pouring it, I'm gonna have all these water stains on my tank. That's great. Okay guys, last but not least, I'm gonna be feeding my scorpion. This is the mother of all the babies I showed you earlier in this video. And yeah, I'm really trying to get this video up fast, guys, so I can enjoy my birthday. So sorry if it wasn't the most entertaining. Or if y'all didn't enjoy it that much, but hopefully you guys did. She does look interested. She's getting the tongs instead of the scorpion. I mean, instead of the roach. And now she has just gotten the roach. Perfect, guys. I. Right. So yeah, that was actually pretty freaking amazing. And pretty interesting. Oh my gosh. And the roach just got away. Wow. Wow, I jinxed it. That was amazing. So I kind of might have accidentally, in quotation marks accidentally, killed the roach out of rage. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. She'll grab it when she feels like it. If not, then I'll have a bunch of mold and I'll have to switch out the substrate. But now nah, she should eat it. Okay, she, sh she grabbed it earlier. So yeah, I think I'm going to end off the video here just because I'm trying to... Why are you still alive? You think this is funny, bro? the hell i'm the roach murderer anyways so yeah i'm gonna end the video off here because i want to upload it do all that good stuff and enjoy my birthday so yeah guys have a good one late late